<laughs> Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us for Frederick County Public Library's virtual programming. I'm Tessa, an FCPL teen librarian, and today we're talking with Jess Mismer, an FCPS school counselor, and Eva Costello, a clinical supervisor at Frederick's uh, Mental Health Association. We asked local teens for their questions about mental health uh, during quarantine, and Jess and Eva are here to try to answer and provide some resources for teens and their family. Our moderator today is Mackenzie. She's our teen representative and will be asking our questions. So I will let you all go ahead and discuss. Thank you so much for being with us today. I need tools that can help me navigate being home with my family all the time. I feel suffocated, but I know I really can't go anywhere because of the pandemic. What do I do? So I can start. Yeah, um, go ahead. I, <laughs> I think there are a lot of sort of online options to connect to other people. Um, and I think the great thing about social media and those, those online resources being um, so present so available is that there are specialized groups that you can um, sort of connect with who might be going through the same things um, you know people who are at home and doing virtual school um, not getting a chance to really interact with other people um, I think that's sort of a great place to start mm -hmm. um, a lot of different um, sort of groups specialized groups um, so I think, you know, I've, I've looked myself online for resources for clients and, um, there's a lot of stuff out there. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, you know, right now with virtual learning and being forced to be indoors and do a lot of our socializing online, I say go ahead and spend that time on your screen. If it means you can connect with your friends and talk to your friends, uh, you can play video games together, you can watch movies together with certain applications, or just FaceTime and talk to each other, because it's important to find those connections when we are physically apart. Um, also, I know it is getting colder, but on days where we have some sunshine, and if you happen to live in an area where you can walk around a bit with your mask, keeping some social distance with your friends. You know, until it gets really cold, keep walking outside because that also gets you some exercise and you can spend some time with people in a safe way. I'd like to start going back to therapy, but my therapist only does online appointments, which I don't feel comfortable doing. What do you suggest I do? That's a really hard one. <laughs> That is really hard, and I know that at the Mental Health Association, we do virtual appointments, um, but we are also still seeing people in person. Um, we have, uh, you know, taken safety precautions, um, wearing masks, uh, making sure people are screened at the door before coming into the building. That includes staff and clients. Um, so there are opportunities if seeing someone in person is um, something you're able to do. I know that um, online appointments, seeing um, a therapist virtually might be the only option and being at home, it is not the most ideal environment to connect with someone um, that way. Um, <clears throat> I think there are applications for um, I want to say like <laughs> chatting for therapy. Um, uh, I can't think of the name right now, but it's something that we can provide a link to um, where it's not, you know, if you're worried about being overheard or you're worried because there's no place in your home where you get any privacy. Um, that's also something that, that you could look into. Yeah, I want to say there's some applications that also let you text or write to a therapist. Again, I, I'll get the names so we can provide those resources. But, you know, that is really hard. It's not the same talking on a screen, especially if you don't feel you have privacy in your home. Uh, so I would say 
uh, for someone asking this question, you kind of have to weigh the pros and cons. Is it, are you in a point where you still need to connect with your therapist and talk to them? And maybe you can't go into full depth and detail because somebody might be listening or you don't have that space in your home, but it still might be good just to check in with them even through the screen, just to kind of keep tabs and keep that connection going until we, you can safely meet with them in person again. Um, it's hard to find a therapist. And if you have somebody already, you want to keep that connection. How do I work with my bipolar disorder? I think that's a um, pretty loaded question because I think there are a lot of different aspects of being diagnosed with bipolar disorder. So depending on sort of the, um, the symptoms that you're struggling with currently, um, you know, certainly I need to say that if there are any safety issues, um, if there is any um, danger of harming yourself or other people to definitely reach out um, for emergency services to get to a hospital, um, reach out to a close support who can uh, assist you in, in getting to safety. Um, but I think if you are working with a mental health professional, certainly communicating around that, um, you know, talking to, um, if you're taking medications, talking to your prescriber about side effects or symptoms of medications that you may be experiencing, um, you know, with bipolar disorder, experiencing both, um, Depressive symptoms and symptoms of mania can both be really disruptive to everyday life. Um, so I think certainly reaching out to your supports, I would say, um, and then sort of depending on what it is you're struggling with, um, talking about that. The only thing I'll add to that, because that is much more in Eva's little house, is um. If you're not currently connected to a practitioner or you're in between services right now, uh, reach out to your school counselors. Uh, they have resources. They have connections to help you get connected with somebody if right now in your place where you feel like you don't have that. Um, we're mainly here as a resource for mental health and buildings. So if you need to be connected with somebody, you can start that conversation with your school counselor or any trusted adult in virtual school and they'll get you to the right person. How can I get help for depression and anxiety during quarantine? I think similarly reaching out for support. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, it, it's hard when you have a history of depression or anxiety. Um, I think, you know, over the past eight months, um, there's certainly been an e increase in those symptoms by a lot of people. And that can be really new and it can be scary. It can be um, really unsettling. Um, I think finding help. Um, and again, you know, if there are any safety concerns, really reaching out to someone immediately. Um, I think, um, yeah, I think that, you know, that this question is sort of similar to the bipolar disorder. Um, just making sure you have support, making sure you're safe. And if you're not sure where to start, just like reach out and ask questions, ask, a, start with adults in your household. If you feel comfortable doing that, reach out to adults that you work with at school. Um, again, if they don't have the answer, they can find the answer from somebody or another organization. Um, but just don't keep quiet about it. Keep communicating with people. What are some ways to manage stress, stress during quarantine? Well, there, <laughs> I think the stress that people are experiencing right now sort of falls on a pretty wide spectrum um i think that finding things that you like to do finding things that make you happy finding things that um you know historically have lowered your stress level that um you know can be a distraction um uh, you know 
it is getting colder. So, so getting outside is, is difficult. Um, but you know, talking to someone or reading, playing a game, you know, sort of the things that you can do safely or feel safe doing. I think everybody's different. Everybody sort of has their, um, has their own set of coping mechanisms for stress or any sort of disturbing feeling we have, anything that sort of disrupts our, our normal um, day-to-day lives. Um, yeah. From the, I'm going to put on the school hat here, but we know virtual learning is just another stress and what is already a really stressful time. Uh, so since you're at home doing a lot of self-management and self-regulation, that's really difficult. And it's okay to express that to your teachers and to your school counselors, to administrators, any, again, any adult you trust and are comfortable talking to, it's okay to vent and express that this is hard. And while you're home, finding the ways to maintain routine is really important. Um, You know, the high schools are starting a little later, but getting out of bed, even just moving over to your desk, maybe throwing on a hoodie, not just being in your pajamas, um, those little things can kind of help change your focus from, okay, I'm home during this pandemic to, okay, now I'm at school during the pandemic on my computer, but it is something different. Um, A lot of school counselors here agreed maintaining some kind of routine can help manage those, those stress levels. How can someone be successful when they have ADHD or autism while going to school remotely? I think finding out what type of resources that the school can offer, um, sort of what additional support, what, you know, um, I guess typically this isn't really something I'm knowledgeable about, but um, having that diagnosis, um, you can can be on a, a, like a specialized plan. Um, like either a behavioral plan or a curriculum plan that that will provide that additional support with certain areas? Yeah, absolutely. If you have a 504 plan or an IEP, uh, you should have a case manager and somebody you could reach out to for extra assistance. And, you know, similar to what I said before, trying to find a routine that works in your home with the circumstances will go a long way. You know, using applications, using electronics, calendars, reminders, post-it notes, anything you can do to remind yourself what you're supposed to be doing at that time, trying to do similar things at the same time. Um, You know, you have a schedule with school, and there are parts of it that are more flexible. So trying to maintain a habit and a routine can really help you during a time where things are kind of chaotic. And if you need help setting that up, if you need help navigating some of the different pieces with at least the school piece, um, again, reach out to somebody. That's we're here. We're here to help. Um, and find what works for you. It may not work right away. It might stop working after a week or two. And it's okay to adjust and figure it out. You know, don't beat yourself up if something's not working right. Things are pretty rough right now. So it's okay to keep trying till you find something that works. And ask for help finding it if you can't. What are some ways to keep healthy eating and healthy activity habits while being at home? I think this is something that um, everyone of all ages is sort of trying to address. You know, this is a situation that, you know, being at home so much and and just not having those safe opportunities that we might have in the past. Um, I think that, you know, 
Jess, you mentioned keeping a routine, and I think that's that's really important. So making sure you have breakfast every day around the same time or um, sort of trying to schedule things in um, to, the, to the point where, where they're still helpful to you, you know, mm -hmm. where they can be stress relievers or where um, it might provide you an opportunity to socialize a little bit if you can do something. Um, but again, just, you know, making sure you're taking care of yourself in a way that, that, that still feels good, that's safe, that's um, providing you a sense of, um, you know, what's healthy right now? What can I reasonably do right now that, that feels healthy, that um, is safe? Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though you're still doing school, it's okay to give yourself breaks. It's okay to say like, you know what, I'm going to go take a walk around my house. I'm going, I know for me, I go up and down the stairs every hour just to keep myself moving. Um, and with your meals, same thing, do that as a break. Schedule those breaks because it could be very easy just to stay on your screen all day, whether you're doing work or not. And um, if you have this opportunity, if you have some of the time and the means to do so, this would be a great time to learn how to cook, how to do things and try something new. Um, I think everyone my age learned how to bake bread <laughs> during uh, the pandemic. So, you know. Uh, view that as an opportunity if you can and using it as a means to socialize and talk to your friends or intermingle with your family when you're not feeling suffocated by them is a good opportunity and that's a worthwhile break. So what can someone do when they're stuck at, an, at a home that has a toxic environment that they can't necessarily get out of? I think that's really difficult. I think that's really, unfortunately, common right now. Um, people aren't able to get out of situations where normally they would have school or work or social activities to, to get the support that they need. Um, I think it's really important to, first of all, find support, um, whether that's a therapist, whether that's making sure you're checking in with a friend regularly, making sure you're talking to your teachers um, or, you know, any other trusted adult or um, just making sure you have a connection to someone um, just in terms of safety and in, in mm -hmm. terms of uh, your own, you know, mental health and well-being. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, safety is paramount. If you are in a situation where you don't feel safe or, and you're worried about your safety, please reach out to somebody. Um, yes, times are different, but your safety is still important. And if you're in a home where you are unsafe, that does need to be addressed. Um, if it's more of just a you need a break from, you know, the emotional burden that might be happening in your house. Uh, utilize social media, reach out. There are all kinds of communities on the internet um, for all walks of life and all ideas and all things. So find your community. And if you need help with that, reach out to your resources. I, maybe not so much the adults, but other teens can certainly help with that. And I'm sure I feel like the library definitely has those resources to re that you can reach out to. Um, and schools, we're trying to maintain some sense of normalcy. So I know a lot of school clubs are still active. They're through Google Meets, like everything else. But if you were part of a school club that gave you a sense of safety and security, check that they're still active, reach out to the advisor and see if you can be a part of it. This is kind of related. How can I find ways to socialize when opportunities are limited, but safety is a major concern? Um, yeah, I think sort of what we, we spoke about earlier, trying to reach out and connect, getting creative about ways to, you know, maybe 
I don't know, take a walk on separate sides of the street with someone or, um, you know, playing a game online. Um, I think, you know, Zoom is free, I think, for the first 40 minutes without an account. So, you know, there's a way to sort of connect with someone face to face, sort of, Um, you know, there, there are resources available. um, And, you know, trying new things. (laughs) I think this is certainly a a season of trying a lot of different things. Um, And, you know, talking to the, to other people, talking to people who are um, almost certainly feeling the same struggles about wanting to connect and not having um, those same opportunities as we did before. Yeah, absolutely agree. Uh, Right now, a lot of socializing is, going to be through zoom or online and that's okay Uh, if it keeps you connected to people if you can spend time with people in a way where you get to talk and be yourself and enjoy something whether it's playing a video game together or watching a movie together absolutely build that into your day Um, it's important to stay connected to people the best ways we can And hopefully we'll have a mild winter, so maybe we can continue the outdoor activities too. That would be nice. Um, Yeah. Don't be afraid to get online and just say, hey, I'm I'm bored. I want to talk to somebody. Or, hey, let's meet every Tuesday at 6 o'clock and just talk for 30 minutes until dinner time. Um, Well, thank you both so much for joining us. That was really helpful, and I'm excited to get to share this uh, information with all of our great teams. Uh, we'll also have information on how you can register for the library Discord, um, where we'll be having a discussion of about mental health. Uh, just connect with some other teams in the air attach and join us. We'd love to have you. Um, thank you both again so much. And Mackenzie, thank you so much for uh, being our team representative. You're awesome. Thank you. Thank you.